very good morning and a very warm welcome. Of course, we need a warm welcome in this uh, morning because uh, there is a snowfall in London. Uh, you are all welcome to Heston Asian United Reformed Church uh, morning service. So let us start our worship. And in the beginning of our worship, I would like to read uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 10. The theme of uh, this verse is worship and wonder. The Bible says, Acts chapter 3, verse 10. They were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The reflection on this verse is by Dr. David Jeremiah. He wrote that worship and wonder, which are so closely connected, are all about coming to the end of our measurement. In the presence of Almighty God, as the Apostle John discovered, the sense of wonder comes naturally and leaves us changed. How could we respond any other way? But without the capability of L, we, where we stand at the edge of ourselves and gaze beyond, we will never come into his presence. Do you ever wonder how long has it has been since you've been a child again, gaping with wide eyes? How would it change your life if you could li live like that every day? How would it change the people around you? Up you are already sensing it. Your heart's very desire. This is what has been lacking in so many lives. We have wandered through the emptiness when we could have been wandering at the fullness of the love of God. Your heart's desire, even if you haven't come to realize it, is to live every moment in the wonder of worship. Thanks be to God for this wonderful reflection. Let us pray to God and give him thanks for his wonder, for his beauty, for his kindness. Loving God, Heavenly Father, we come to you. We praise you for your wonder. We give you thanks for your wonderful name, the name which is above all the names. You are Almighty God. You are our Savior. You are our Redeemer. We give you thanks for your kindness, for your grace, your mercy, and your love. The love beyond our understanding. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this beauty of the day, for the peaceful night. Almighty God, I give thanks for all your people, those who are worshiping with us. Please bless us, lead us, and guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may glorify your name. We pray for all the churches, all the people, those who are worshiping around the world, in our neighborhood, in their homes. Please be with them and help them that they worship you with truth and spirit. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. Our first hymn in this morning is To God be the glory, great things he has done. Number 289. It's a beautiful hymn. It is, it is so good to uh, praise him in the morning. To God be the glory, great things he has done. <clears throat> and uh, let us give him name. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave 
as his son, who yield his life in atonement for sin, and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Who come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. O perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God. And every offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receive. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Who come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great or rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be the wonder, the beauty, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Who come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. We need to give him thanks we, because he has done great things for us. Let us pray to God. It's a prayer of thanksgiving and confession. Lord God Almighty, we praise you. We praise you, we give you thanks for your truth. You declare your truth to the world through your Son, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for his faithfulness. We praise you, we honor you because you are trustworthy. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks because you are the source of life. We give you thanks for each and every moment that you have given us. You have given us the joy and the beauty of our relationship. We give you thanks for our children, our families, our loved ones, those who are near and far. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your spirit, the spirit which is indwelling in us. We give you praise for your Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the people of God, your church. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you are kind God. You are always with your people. We give you thanks for your uniqueness, for your kindness, for your grace and mercy. Loving God, we remember your goodness to us and to those who have gone before us. We tell you a story in every generation. You are our familiar God, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God of a pilgrim people, your church. We give all praise and glory to you. 
the God who loves us. Heavenly Father, in this time of prayer, we give thanks that you have given us this opportunity that we can worship you freely. We give you thanks for this country and wherever we are living, freedom of worship. We give you thanks for your precious word that we can read your scripture. We can listen your word of God. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge our lack of understanding. There's so many times we are becoming so selfish that we are trying to focus upon our needs. We are always thinking about ourselves. Heavenly Father, give us a heart that we may think about other people. We may focus upon your kindness. We confess our sins. We give you thanks that you are always ready to forgive us. We rely upon your forgiveness, your kindness. So please forgive our sins and help us that we may adopt your mind. We may love one another and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Our next hymn is All to Jesus I Surrender, number four in Mission Praise. If you got the book at home, so you can join us in this uh, uh, this beautiful song. <clears throat> Number four, all to Jesus I surrender. Number four, all to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender humbly at his feet. I bow, worldly player, all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender Make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Really know that thou art mine. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my Blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender 
All to Jesus I surrender. No, I feel the sacred flame. All the joy of full salvation. Glory, glory to his name. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. It is time to listen to the word of God. And I will request Ibrahim Akil, please uh, read this text for us. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11, verse 1 to 16. Gospel of St. John, chapter 11, verse 1 to 16. Yes. John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 16. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So two sisters sent a message to Jesus, telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory for this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judah. But the disciple objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judah were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have, they have no life, light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus has died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go and see him. Thomas nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go to and die with Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you. <clears throat> Let us uh, pray to God because uh, we need to glorify Him and we need to praise Him. We'll sing together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. For what of all taste, glory divine. Number 22. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Number 22. Let us give him thanks for his blessing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fault is glory divine. Here is your salvation. Purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture burst on my side. Angel descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, 
This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, happy and glad, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let us pray. So pray for intercession. We need to pray for all the people, those who are around us. We need to pray for unhappy lives. We pray for People, those in the hospital are at home. Almighty God, gracious Father, in your presence, humbly we come before you. We come with our needs. We come with our requests. We come with our pain and agony. We come to you with our sufferings, with our weaknesses. We rely upon your strength, your kindness, your word, your promises. Almighty God, in this time of prayer, we pray for all unhappy lives. Those who are going through difficult times, we ask about the people, those who are sensitive to criticism and quick to take offense. Those who desire their own way, whatever the inconvenience or cost to other. May your judgment to Heavenly Father and mercy be for their healing. Heavenly Father, we remember the people, those who are in isolation, those who are lonely in their homes or in the hospital, those who are away from their loved ones, living in a strange culture, in a strange environment where they feel marginalized where they feel that they are all alone. You may give them awareness, sense of confidence that they rely upon your fellowship because your name is Emmanuel, God with us. Loving God, Heavenly Father, we pray for all the people, those who are victim of the different diseases, especially those who are victim of this uh, coronavirus. Those who have lost their loved ones. In this morning, loving God, Heavenly Father, we pray for our friend, Mr. David Johnson, Mr. Aslam Khori, Reverend Bashir Sidham, and all the other people to whom we know and those who are not known by us. But you know their agony, you know their pain. We ask your comfort and your blessing upon their families, their loved ones. We pray for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his cabinet members and all other people, those who are working in the front lines, doctors, nurses, social workers, ambulance drivers, 
and plus staff and all the other people, the police and the army, the scientists, Heavenly Father, be with them and protect them. We ask your protection for our children, those who are away from their institutions. There's a question of their future in front of them. We pray for parents and for their teachers. Give them confidence and protect them from the evil. Loving God, we ask your anointing and your power upon our queen and her household. Heavenly Father, we pray for all the other political and the religious leaders, especially your servants, those who are helping your people in their spiritual growth, those who are leading the worship in their churches, in their homes, and the people, they are not able to come to churches to worship freely. But we give you thanks for this social media, that we are together through this media. I pray for my church, Eastern Asian United Reformed Church, all the congregation, members, those who are away from the churches, our senior citizens, children, youth, all the church members, church committee members, please bless them. I ask your blessing upon my family and the families, those who are away from us, those who are about to travel in this uh, morning, especially we pray for Shiva as she is going to Pakistan. Please be with her. We ask your blessing upon Amir and all the musicians and the elders in this church. Sunday school teacher, she is helping your people, your children. Be with Shazia and bless her. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give in this day our daily bread. And forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our next hymn is Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God, number 46. Father, we love you. Number 46. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you, glorify your name in all the earth, glorify your name, glorify your name, glorify your name. In all the earth, Jesus, we love you, we worship and adore you, glorify your name in all the earth, glorify your name, glorify your name, glorify in all the earth. Spirit, we love you, we worship and adore you, glorify your name in all the earth, glorify your name, glorify your name, glorify Loving God, we glorify your name as we are going to meditate upon your word. Almighty God, we acknowledge our weaknesses. We rely upon your wisdom. 
we rely upon your Holy Spirit. So please help us that we may understand your word. Your word is giving us comfort. Your word is giving us trust. Almighty God, once again, we come before you. We ask your guidance, your power. Help us that we may understand your deep revelation. And we can understand only by the power and by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Bless you people. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. This is uh, one of my favorite chapter in the Gospel of John. Because uh, we can experience the love and the power of God in this text. In this story, we can see that uh, Lazarus, who was a good friend of Jesus Christ, just had a special love for this family. And uh, when Lazarus died, because he was sick for a long time, and the Bible says that uh, uh, when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end his death, no, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. And his friend came to see Jesus, and they were talking about the sickness of his friend Lazarus. That family was very close to his heart. And when Jesus was away from that village, in the Gospel of John chapter 11, verse 1, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one who love is sick. The message was that Lazarus is very sick. But in fact, he died when Jesus approached to that family. So you can see that uh, the family there, they were waiting. All the community members, they were waiting. Family members, they were waiting for Jesus Christ. Jesus was a bit late and they were worried about their brother Lazarus. When Jesus approached there, they had their dialogue with the sisters. They were complaining that if you would be here, our brother will not die. Lazarus is dead. And if for your sake, I am glad I was not there. It's a very strange comments by Jesus Christ. But in the second part of this verse, verse 15, John chapter 11, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. There was a purpose of that delay. Sometimes we fail to understand the timing and the purpose of God. So many times we are saying to God, why, why God, why you was not there? Sometimes we are saying, when God, when, when you will come? And that was a question in the heart and the mind of the family of Lazarus. That was a question, why Jesus, why he was not here? That was a question in the mind of his sisters. God is not uh, uh, bound to answer or all the questions because God wants us to wait. 
but that doesn't mean that god is not willing to help us but the question is why so many time god is taking so long this is a problem with the human being we want to know everything this is this is a psychological problem we are very curious we are very keen in the lives of other people even in the lives of god we are very keen to know about god i mean this is the question in the minds of the people those who don't believe in god they are trying to explore because they are having the dialogue and the argument with the people those who believe in god so they are also exploring they are also want to know about god this is a problem with the human being we want to know everything about other people we are very nosy about that and we want to know about god we want to know about his plan we want to know why and when god you will do this and nowadays this is the issue with the whole world they are raising this question god why we are having this problem where are you why you are not interfering why you are intervening in this situation where is god but god is not liable to answer us god god is worthy to be praised because god knows what is he is doing god knows what he is doing even when we don't know how he is doing that when we don't know his uh, he, what is plan how should you respond to the truth how would you respond to that delay in your lives this is a danger something sometime if you don't know everything is better suppose if somebody will be aware that he will die tomorrow or his loved one they will die tomorrow it's very dangerous sometimes knowing everything can be uncomfortable most of us need to grow in the area or in the arena of trusting god we shouldn't be so keen and anxious about the god's timing and that was the problem with his family the sister mary and martha they wanted to know everything god why you was not here why there was a delay them comfort and he said let us go to him this verse is so beautiful he was in the grave for four days it was very smelly his body was dismantled why he said let us go to him it looked like he was he was not dead for christ he said remove that stone from the grave remove that stone jesus knew his authority he knew that he is in a position and the power to raise lazarus the purpose of god what is the purpose man you can see in this text the purpose of the family and the man was that brother should die that was their purpose that is the purpose of all the human being when they are collecting the things when they are having a relationship in this world the purpose is that they don't want to die that's why we are having walls around our homes 
That's why we're having the CCTV cameras around us. That's why we are saving the money because we want protection. That is our purpose. Nobody wants to die. But what is the purpose of God? Through that, it's the reality of life. We are all in a journey. We are about to die. When my friends, they passed away in the last week, I was so amazed. It was so very painful. What is the reality of life? We are in a queue. But what is the purpose of God? Jesus wanted to teach something. And he said that in verse 25, 23. Sorry, 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? That was the whole purpose. To know the authority and the power of God. It was a common thought that after three days, there was a possibility that was the influence of the Greek knowledge that the dead can raise. But after four days, there was no hope. And Jesus wanted to teach them that this is my timing. This is my authority. What is your responsibility? You can only plan. You can only pray. You can only um, communicate with him. But you know, God knows your situation. God knows your plan. God knows your circumstances. And God is in control. God wanted to teach them all these things. God is not interested in, in uh, rescuing us just so that you may uh, deal with your difficulty. All the world is in trouble. And God is not interested in rescuing us just so that uh, you don't have to deal with difficulties. Because we are having difficulties. So we are expecting that God must deal with that. There is no escape from the difficulties. Learn to trust God in your difficulties. You know, when Peter, he was in the boat and he wanted to come to see Jesus, he wanted to see that uh, he, he can walk on the water. God knew that, 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 that experience would be difficult for Peter. But God allowed him to come in the sea and walk on the water. God allowed people to go and cross that Red Sea. God allowed Daniel go into the din of the lions. God is not interested in your troubles. God is interested in you, that you may grow into these problems. Because God knows the solution. We are worried because of our problems. But God is not worried. God got the solution of your problems. But we need to follow his timetable. God wants us to live by discernment. Discernment is very important. Discernment, spirit is very important for the believers. A revelation and the knowledge of God. We need the wisdom of God, not only the head knowledge, not only our intellectual power, because we wanted to know everything through our knowledge. We wanted to know God through our intellectual power. But we know to rely upon God's knowledge, God's power, God's revelation. If, you, if your mind feels worn out, burn out all the time, that means you are not trusting God. If there is a doubt about the power of God. And that was the problem with this family. 
they were having doubt. And that's why Jesus said, remove that stone from the grave. God wanted to remove that stone of doubt from our lives. We often say God is never uh, late, but generally he isn't early either. God is following his timetable, his calendar. And that's why Jesus said, I'm pleased that uh, uh, I'm, for your sake, I'm glad I was not there. After delay, Christ starts working. You know, God wanted to teach something. And you, you need to learn about the grace and the power of God in your troubles. And God always tried to prove himself in the trouble. When the Israelites, they were in uh, uh, slavery in Egypt, they were crying and God listened their cry. And in their problems, in their slavery, God wanted to teach them something. And you know, in the lives of Israelites, you can see one more thing. That was a journey for only 40 days. And God changed the route for the Israelites. And it took them 40 years. You can, you can imagine. Where are the 40 days comparatively to the 40 years? You know why God took so long? Because God knew that they are not fully prepared for the promised land. Before they will enter into the promised land, they should learn about the providence of God. They should learn about the authority of God into that wilderness. So in all these crises, in your suffering, in your pain, in your agony, God wanted to teach us something. God wanted to teach you and me something. So God is always trying to teach us in our troubles. And here in this family, God wanted to teach them about his authority and about his power. God is not early. If he is late, but he is not early. We, sometimes we are, <coughs> sorry, sometimes we, we are so excited, you know, why God is not uh, uh, coming, you know, and why he's not taking control, especially in these days when, uh, you know, people, they are having trouble. What we need to do? The first thing, wait with patience. That is the first principle. If you are going through a tough and difficult situation, you need to wait. In the book of James, there's a beautiful example of the farmer. When they are planting the seed, you know, they are sowing the seed in the land, in the fields. So they are waiting for the, for the rain, they are waiting for the sunshine, they are waiting for the harvest. So there is a process. In your spiritual growth, there is also a process. When we are talking about our troubles, it's a, it's a problem with the human being. We are always thinking about our circumstances. We are hardly thinking about our destination. So the, this example of this, uh, uh, these farmers, you know, so they are thinking about their harvest time. So they are planting the seed. We are walking by faith, not by sight. Be patient. This is very important if you are walking with God. The second principle is, which is also, uh, you need to dwell with, the, with patience. And the other thing is, trust on God, not upon the people. If he did everything we asked for immediately, we would never grow and develop. Timing and trust work side by side. After patience, we need to trust God with patience. And I said that timing and trust work together. 
it is it is very uh, important you know because sometime you know uh, this is a good friend of mine and uh, he, is, he is very bad in time, time management whenever he saying oh i will come this time and uh, he is always late i can i can trust him i can rely upon him but i cannot rely upon his timing it, it, it's 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 our everyday experience sometimes people they are very punctual some people they are not very punctual you know so the punctuality is something different but you can trust that person even if if they are late it's the same with your relationship with god if god is not early that doesn't mean that uh, uh, he is not trustworthy try to follow the calendar and the timing of god accept god's timing you know we are we are so interested in our own dreams and hope and we are having the frustrating moments in our life why it's not happening why it's happening now so this is a timing this is a procedure this is a process of everything when we entrust ourselves to him we can experience total peace and happiness you know god created this universe with a timing in 6 days he created all this universe it wasn't difficult for god to say just to say and everything will be there but god took his time 6 days 6 days mean 6 eras is not only the 24 hour day you know it's a era the long period of time so long time that god created all this universe and it wasn't easy the spirit of god was hovering upon water and you know the word hovering means as the hen she is at in eggs you know it's very painful experience for the hen so for god it was very painful experience to create that universe for in 6 days he created all this universe that's why he took rest on the 7th day the spirit of god was hovering upon the water the spirit of god the holy spirit was there jesus was there that's why god said let us make man in our own image so if god is doing everything according to his time table when time came jesus came to this world god took the human form and he came to this world according to galatians chapter 4 verse 4 and the time came jesus came to this world through woman virgin mary this is the timing of god when he will come again when he will come to rule the world when there will be a new jerusalem and we will live with him this is the time for everything so brother and sister we don't need to be frustrated we don't need to be angry learn to rely on god it is very important there are so many plans in the mind of the man proverb chapter 16 verse 9 a man minds plan his way but the lord directs his steps and makes them sure it's not bad to make a plan but in all your plans you need to ask his guidance his help and he will definitely help you in your plans god is always with us and in this story in the story of lazarus you can see the plan of god the plan of god was to show his glory to raise that dead lazarus after four days and this miracle is a great evidence great hope for all of us those who are having the experience of bereavement in our lives and this verse is very popular most of the uh, pastors at the evangelist they are sharing the word of god when there is a bereavement and uh, death and they are talking about the resurrection and eternal life and uh, god promises in this text i am 
the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. So there shouldn't be any fear. We need to rely upon God. Let us give him thanks for his wonderful promises and for his authority and for his love. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you praise that you are perfect God. We give you thanks for your promises, for your timing, for your calendar. Almighty God, give us a wisdom that we may follow your timetable in our lives. Give us a patience, hope, and comfort, and trust that we may rely upon your authority and your power. Bless your people, Heavenly Father. At this time of uh, prayer, loving God, we remember our friend, Dr. Amir Khan, uh, and his uh, family as his wife passed away. We ask your compassion and your love and your patience be with him and all the other people, those who are having the experience of bereavement in their lives. You may give them comfort and bless them. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. Let us uh, continue worship and uh, we will sing our final hymn. Oh Lord, all the world belongs to you. Number 90. In the... Uh, Rejoice and sing. Number 90. Lord, all the world belongs to you. <clears throat> Number 90. Oh Lord, all the world belongs to you. And you always making all things new. What is wrong you forgive, and the new life you give is what turning the world upside down. The world's only loving to his friends, but your way of loving never ends. Loving enemies too, and it's loving. Thank you.